Oh, I love it when you stop by, especially on the weekends. I know how many other options you got out there. So thanks a lot. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And it is the weekend of March 1st. Now, if this is the first time you've been here, I really appreciate you being here. And I'll try not to waste your time. What I do is focus in on hot penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. And you can find a penny stock on any market. There are stocks under $5 on every single market. Now, when I go hunting for stocks, looking for potential, I could go through the news and the filings, but that takes a lot of time. That's a lot of read. Not to mention, it's very subjective. What is hot and what's not? But if I go over to the chart, it's more definitive. You can see volume coming in. You know a lot more people are trading this stock. You can see a breakout setup. You know it's getting ready to run. And you can see if it's going to the moon already. Seeing heat in a chart is easy. So when you see heat in a chart, then go read through all the filings and the press releases on that one particular company. See if you can find a catalyst. It doesn't have to be fresh. A hot chart can run on news that came out two weeks ago if it still has any heat in it. So find a hot piece of news, match it up with your hot chart, and you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis, including now. We are looking at Up Health Inc., ticker UPHL. She's been running for the last few days. She had a filing come out, not in news press. She hasn't got any news to talk about, but she had a filing come out with a lot of information in it, talking about a lot of money that is about ready to go in her hand halfway through this month. That's why she's running, and I'm going to be more specific here in a minute. So UPHL finished the day at 68 cents on Friday, and boom, she was up almost 75%. She's looking like a rocket stock right now. She is on the pink tier and current, and she hasn't been here very long. Halfway through December, she got kicked off the NASDAQ, and she came down here to the pink. That's why we don't have a valid profile. That's why we don't have a validated uh, transfer agent because she hasn't been here long enough for the paperwork to catch up, if you will. Now, what's most interesting here is in the filing, they tell us that the company has appealed this decision. Well, that's great. But normally, in my experience, appeals are made before you're kicked off. You're trying to prevent your removal from the major market. And it puts a stay on the order. If they were going to kick you off this Friday, but you got your appeal in in time, they can't do anything to you until they talk to you. And normally the appeal is two or three months down the road. So you know they're not going to be leaving the major market until they have that meeting. Well, <laughs> they've appealed after the fact. So they're already on the pink right now. And as I said, we don't have any green ticks, but they did just come from the NASDAQ. So you know they're probably a pretty solid company. So what is Up Health about? Well, we'll start here, and then I'm going to give you some information I found in a presentation, which they like to call DEX. They're brochures. They're digital brochures. They try to give the layman as much information as they can in the simplest terms as possible. If you ever can find a presentation, they're the best places to get your easy information. So they tell us here that UpHealth provides digital-first healthcare solutions that seamlessly integrates with existing systems and powers many of the world's largest health institutions. Now, to be completely honest, I don't know when this company had their start, but obviously telehealth really got a launch during COVID. When nobody was going out of the house to see their doctors, we had to find ways for them to talk to their doctors. And a phone call might have worked, but hey, we got the internet, so we created telehealth. And telehealth has just exploded since then. It has become huge, big business. And this company is there, doing really, really well. So I'm going to dive into the presentation. Right now, I am at their website, uphealthinc.com. They've got lots of information here, but I just found it easier in the presentation. But I'm going to start right here. UpHealth combines established services with a new digital-first approach that doesn't just adapt to today's challenges, but leapfrogs past them. We can integrate with any existing or emerging system, and we already power many of the world's largest and most trusted health institutions. They are empowering a United States and international network of 30,000 providers, 
160 behavioral health providers, and 2,100 health care venues, including hospitals, clinics, education facilities, and large employees. Now, this presentation, it came from 2022. There isn't one for 2023. There isn't one for 2024. But the numbers are really the only thing outdated, how much money they were making. Obviously, they've been growing since then. But their business has been growing, but not changing. So we can get a lot of solid information here. Now, the first thing you need to know about this company is you might as well call them vertical. They have built every link in the chain from the bottom to the top so that they can control the entire environment that they're working in. They've got three primary divisions. They have got what they call the integrated care management, which is your backbone of the entire company. This connects everybody. Centronet is the cloud-based platform that connects your hospitals, your clinics, your physicians, your doctors, your pharmacies, your uh, addict uh, clinics, everything. This is how everybody communicates in real time. So if the patient goes from the doctor to the hospital in one day, the information is following them instantly. Then you have part two, that is the actual care itself. Whether it is being given online or being given at a hospital or clinic, they've got both. They start you off or continue on with you online and when they need you to come in, they've got places for you to go. Now, they have two subdivisions in this care uh, section. They have Marty, which is working in the United States, all 50 states. Then they have Hello Lift. And as far as I can tell, this is only India. Now, I may be wrong about that, but I do know they are primarily and really strong in India. So they have covered the United States, all 50, and they've got India, which is a very small country with the second largest debatably maybe the first largest population in the world the biggest and when you're working with people in healthcare, that's where you want to be where there's a lot of people and then finally you have their follow-up services after you've seen the doctor what do you need to make you feel better we need to get you some medications from the pharmacy you need to see some psychologists get some behavioral service we need to send you to an addiction clinic whatever it is the follow-up service so from a to z they cover everything now just a real quick glance here we're not going to go through all of it but i want to bullet some of the things here Looking at the integrated care management, the backbone, the cloud platform. As I told you, this is what makes it all work. They connect everybody, all the facilities, the care organizers, the hospitals, the clinics. Then you got all the personnel, the doctors, the physicians, the psychologists. And then, of course, you've got the government agencies and the counties as well. Now, they tell us back in 2022, they were topping 8.2 million people on their platform. That's a lot of people, but is it? They are here in all 50 states of America. What do we got? 350 million. And India? Oh, I don't know what they got. 1 million? 1.5 billion? I don't know. A lot of people. So is 8.2 million really a lot? Or are they just now scratching the surface? Now, each one of their divisions is making money in their own way. With the integrated care management, they either get one-time license fees or they get reoccurring subscription fees. Then you got your virtual care. Of course, again, everybody is connected. That's the magic that makes it all work. They tell us that Marty, the one that's working in the United States, is a leading established brand with presence and partnership with U.S. health systems across 2,300 locations. And again, they make money from infrastructure fees, service fees, reoccurring visits. And then finally, the last one, where the patients are getting the most help after they see the doctor. What do they need? You got to go get a medicine. You got to go see a psychologist. You got to go to the addiction clinic. So they're making money there as well. Last detail I want to lay on you, it's a big one. All the company's products, all the company's services are available in 250 languages. Now think about that. As far as I can tell, the company's only in two countries right now. The United States, where we do speak a lot of languages, but English is our primary language, right? And they're in India. Yet, 
All of their products and services are available in virtually every language in the world. Folks, this company is ready to grow. They have the potential to be in every single country. So I'm liking this company a lot. Let's go take a look at the stock now and get some information on that. Relative volume on Friday exploded. Whoa, she went from just under 50,000 shares to 336,000 shares. Now, I know those aren't big numbers, but you got to first remember we're down here at the OTC where it looks like Friday we did 4.1 billion shares on the OTC. That means 12,300 companies had to divide all those shares up. That really is not a lot of shares. And to give you an idea of how low that volume really is, before COVID, we were doing 60 to 70 billion shares a day. A day. We have a hard time breaking 5 billion. I think a couple of weeks ago, I saw 11 billion and truly, Truly, I got excited seeing that number. We need the OTC to get some volume. Share structure for Up Health. That's not bad. Outstanding share count is under 18 million. We have no idea how many shares the insiders own, so we don't know what the float is. Now, the float is not going to be any higher than the outstanding share count. So there's no more than 17.7 .7 million shares on the open market, and it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company is a mere $12 million. Now, I want you to keep that in mind because we're going to look at a big number in the news, money that's coming into their pocket. And I want you to compare that to the market cap of $12 million. Taking a look at the financials for the company. Wow, that's some huge jumps we've got there. 2020, we were at a mere $5 million. Now, we know that's millions because they tell us to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. In one year, she went from $5.3 million to $123 million. Then in 2022, they added an additional $25 million to the revenues. But here's what's exciting about that. Though they only added $25 million in revenues, their profits jumped $30 million. Whoa, somebody's tweaking that profit margin and it's doing them justice. Quarterlies, Ooh, we got a lot of different numbers here. Over the last year, we're running from about 32 million to 42 million. Currently, we are at the low end of that spectrum, but we're bringing in over 50% of that in profit. So they're making steady revenues, they're making steady profit. Balance sheet for the company. We do have money in the bank. We got about $3.3 million. Total assets, ooh, $235 million. Total liabilities, it's up there, but it's less than the assets, 171, which means we've got positive stockholder equity of $64 million. That's ours, the investors. That's divvied up amongst all these shares. All right, let's take a look at those disclosures now. We've got an 8K here, which is actually what I want to share with you. I've got that right here. All right. They made a deal in November of last year. They did a purchase agreement with a company called Forest Buyer, which is an affiliate of GTCR. They are going to sell to Forest Buyer all their interest of CloudBreak, one of their companies, one of their subsidiaries, for an aggregate amount of $180 million. Now, their annual revenues last year was under $160 million. Their market cap is $12 million. And now they're getting $180 million. When are they getting it? They tell us down here the transaction is expected to close no later than March 15th. Or is it no earlier? No earlier, <laughs> but in no event, no, not prior. This is the only date we're given is March 15th. They said that it has to meet certain requirements as all deals do, but in no event will it close earlier than March 15th, unless consented to. <laughs> so there's always an exception to the rule. So we have a catalyst and this really is the catalyst, folks. They've got a lot of things going on. Their business is growing. Their revenues are strong but they've just got a big chunk of cash and I don't know how they're going to use it. They don't give us any information over here. Matter of fact, I can show you when we jump over to the news, there ain't a lick of news here, but I did do some searching around Google and I found some current news. 
That is, if you consider October from last year current. That's as close as I could get. They tell us here that Thrasis Inc., which is a subsidiary of UpHealth Holdings, files for voluntary reorganization under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. But don't panic. They tell us down here that the parent company, UpHealth, and their direct and indirect subsidiaries have not filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection and are operating in the normal course of business. So everything is copacetic. We don't have any problems. They've just got one subsidiary, one company that they are reorganizing. They're not killing it. They're not burying it. They're fixing it. So everything is hunky-dory. So don't let any rumors of this company being involved in a bankruptcy scare you. Now let's go take a look at this chart. I'm liking it. She has been running for basically one day and the news has been out for two days. I think there is more to be gotten. So let's do some charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. God, I love charting. We're going to look at two charts for two tickers for one company. Remember I told you the company had a delisting back in December. They used to be on the New York Stock Exchange. Well, they changed their ticker. Anytime you get a new ticker, you get a new chart. So we're looking at the original chart. The ticker back then was UPH when she was on the New York Stock Exchange. We're looking at a one-day, one-year chart. A year ago, she was at $2.32. Really firm above that $200 for many a month. Then in July, she slipped underneath it and then fell hard and fast. Here in September, she went underneath a buck and never turned around and came back up. On December 11th, she was kicked off the New York Stock Exchange. Last price, 25 cents. December 12th, she wakes up on the pink OTC. Her new price is 15 cents. But she's done with her downtrend. She isn't falling anymore. She now started going sideways and started pushing up slowly, climbing. And then when the filing came out, she started the move, jumping from 35 cents up to 75 cents, over a 100% run right here. All of our SMAs are climbing, going in the right direction. Volume is just coming into the picture. Our oscillators are exploding right now. Every single one of them is literally looking like they're going to the moon. And our RSI is red hot up there just under 80. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. A nice steady incline floating on that 50-day SMA. Took a bounce off to 50 here, climbed, then fell. And then on Friday, she took off the first day of the surge. All of our SMEs are picture perfect here. Volume was very strong on Friday. Oscillators are still going to the moon and roasting. Everything looks juicy on the one-hour chart. Looking at our five-day, five-minute chart. So there's our low. That was, what, four days ago at 33 cents. We hit a high Friday of 74 cents. You had over 100% run there in those three days. We had our up, our down, came down near the 50 and then took a rip pre-market. Look at that rip. She went from 38 cents up to 57 cents before the bell. Bell came on. She came down falling to about 48 cents and then floated on that nine-day SMA the entire day. Never once coming down even to the 20. Folks, that's amazing. This nine-day SMA, it is cracker thin. Very easy to break through the nine-day. Your 20-day is like balsa wood. You could go through that pretty easy too. Well, she's getting close to it, but she hasn't got to it yet. The price is very light and buoyant. All of the heat, all of this lightness tells me this stock is not yet done climbing. Our oscillators... All right, they're cooling off on the five minute. We had a couple of red bars here. So all of our oscillators are starting to pull down. We've even had a negative crossover on our MACD. But I still think it's worth a watch. I think this is worth putting on your watch list for this week, folks. That's a lot of money. Their market cap is only 12 million. Their revenues were barely 158 million. This is 180 million. I think we could see another pop. Now, I'm not talking about staying in this for a long hold. I'm talking about looking for the volume increase, the surge, the profits, the exit. <laughs> Remember, folks, I only share enough information with you to make you curious, to get you excited, but you're the one doing the investing. And I don't tell you everything, so do some more due diligence, please. 
Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.